I have been a huge fan of Dan Electro since I was a budding guitarist as a teenager. And today I'm gonna to show you a lost line of pedals called Wasabi. We have the Overdrive. The Distortion. Rockabye. Horus Trim. And my favorite, the forward reverse delay pedal. Let's take a look at them. Before we jump into how cool these pedals are, how they sound, and why I love them, we need to know why they exist. And they exist at the hands of a guy named Steve Reidinger, who has a storied past in guitar and guitar effects. So it really starts when he's a teenager wearing a suit, Southern California, and he invents the Fox Tone Machine and this line of pedals. And it's a really cool thing. He moves on from that, does some other stuff, and gets back into electronics, being very influential in importing, exporting, and manufacturing things from Asia between there and the States. He even brought part of what makes the fax machine famous to America, and he gets involved in manufacturing, and he finds this way to make pedals in parts of Asia where no one ever had, and that resulted in collaborating and distributing Arion. He did the Gorilla Amplifiers. He did the Banana Tuners. In 1997, he saw that the brand Dan Electro, which is originally from Neptune, New Jersey, and very old, was just kind of defunct. So he buys the name, and at the 97 NAMM show, he launches these line of guitars and they sell at like hotcakes, thousands and thousands of Dan Electro guitars. And he launches this classic series of effects. I've talked about them tons because this was my first awesome delay and I still love it. In this era from 97, 98, 99, you even see things like the Real Echo. There's a lot of Dan Electro products from that time. But in 2004, we end up seeing these Wasabis and they were primarily sold in Japan. They were manufactured in China and they are very strange. And when you dig into the history, there's not a lot on the internet. I found some things on the Wayback Machine, um, like a magazine article or two, and there's not lots to say about them except they are by all means possibly the first two-in-one series ever made in guitar pedals. Each pedal independently has two buttons and that'll either be tap tempo or a totally different circuit. Tons of options, tons of versatility. But yeah, if we look at this, heating the old maxim that you should always be prepared to try different things, well, that's exactly what Wasabi is. So Wasabi is this idea in their branding that you should try something different. Um, and it's like this quirky play on Japanese culture, it says in a lot of the literature. So this line is in fact, just this hot take into guitar pedals in 2004 saying, we're weird, here's a weird line of guitar pedals. These are supposed to be odd, deal with them. They don't last that long, probably make these less than three years and they really never took off in America. I did have one on a personal board and I still have a friend in Mississippi who I made him a pedal board and he still uses one of these. So all of that said, that's kind of the brief history they're part of Dan Electro, but even in the branding, and if you notice on the box, it really doesn't say Dan Electro. You won't even see it on the outside of this box, and you actually have to look at the side of the pedal to even catch it. So let's jump right into the first pedal, which is the Overdrive. I do have the box because I have the box to the whole series because I found an unused, new old stock entire set of these in the box. And I'm sorry to this person who I saw the other day say, it's annoying when Josh says he has the box too much. So today you're getting it with every pedal because I have the box. He has the box. And for all of those out there who love he has the box, I'm gonna give away a complete set of these because I already had a set, but they weren't mint. See, these are mint. I'm gonna give away this set, which is four boxes, no box. I'm gonna keep the mint ones for the museum and the person who says they hate he has the box cannot win. We'll give you the rules to the giveaway at the yes. end of the episode. Because I don't know them yet, but they're gonna give them to you. All right, inside this box, we have a slightly perma-moist. Perma-moist. It's permanently moisturized. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, we can use perma moist. <laughs> Permanently. <laughs> Perma moist just means there's a little moisture that got permanently saturated into the cardboard. It happens in vintage pedals. Original sticker, a Wasabi Evitz Corporation. This is an interesting thing for some of you. Snark tuners that you put on your headstock. It's the best selling guitar tuner in the history of guitar. Uh, that is also Steve and Evitz is that parent company. So he gets around. You have this really cool prop up thing. There's something you can do with that. Maybe it holds like barbecue sauce for your nuggets. I don't know. But it says something that cues us in to what the brand is about. Wasabi, you are about to see something that could change your life or at least change your music, which for you may be one and the same. It's a big statement for a pedal. I don't know. All right, in the back. And they're really heavy. They're a little obnoxious, but that's why I'm a fan. Like, listen to this. You ready? That's crazy. So this is the A01 Overdrive, touch sensitive. They used a buzzword, good job. Nick, look how mint, this is- It's mint. Addison, this is net. Does it smell <clears throat> like mint? There's some common features among many of these and they're really clever. I just have to say like, no joke, this line is really clever with the user interface, with the options. And to this day, I haven't seen anyone do this. That doesn't mean it needs to be done again, but it does mean that these are really perfect for some of you. So please check them out. You have some things like this, a pickup selector. Now you can go single or humbucker, or you can turn it off. And this is useful because single coils are weaker than humbuckers and it's giving you an input attenuation for every guitar you have. And today I'm gonna mainly play, I'm gonna play two Dan Electra guitars and one of them has P90s and I'm gonna use single coil and it sounds really good. When I put it into off, it doesn't sound as good. So these are just nice features for every guitar player. Now on this drive, this happens on a couple, you have overdrive here and boost and you get to preset, is it 10 dB or 5 dB of post boost? And that's really cool. Most of the drives you have this click through. So you have flat EQ. This, I believe, it's some form of the Daddio, which is really a governor. I believe that the topology and the drives are both kind of existing from the governor. I could be wrong, I don't really care, but I believe it's a very tweaked modded EQ stack on top of a governor, which as you know, lets you go from something like a Daddio to something like my Angry Charlie and a hundred other pedals that use that topology. But level, tone, EQ select, so you have a tone control and this selectable EQ, like, I don't know the word. It's like it puts the EQ in certain spots and then you can tone control it really nice. A dry, uh, clean blend, which is amazing. I mean, that's the, the Voodoo Lab Sparkle Drive and so many great pedals. For bass, these all work phenomenal on bass because of that. And drive control, nine volts straight ahead. And um, let's jam on it. grocery store radio. Anyway, I'm using the Kemper. 
and the profile is the MIG-50 one so it's the clean mig 50 setting josh's mig 50. um that guitar by the way that is a den electro that i walked into a pawn shop like about 10 years ago here in kansas city and someone had routed it out and put the fralin p90s in it's a weird crazy strange setup because all of those had the lipstick pickups but that's mainly what i want to play today i am going to jump on to a dano baritone and we're going to get pretty saucy lady 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 warder Lady, words are hard. All right, moving on to the next pedal. Next up, we are jumping to the Wasabi Distortion, and yes, I have the box. He has the box. All right, I'm gonna spare everyone the literature. It's all the same. And that one person, I know who you are. I saw you on Facebook. Don't use the stinger. It's annoying. Don't watch the show. Can you say, don't use the stinger, it's annoying, but hold very still? Don't use the stinger, it's super annoying. Just play the guitar, stop talking, and the stingers are stupid. Perfect, thank okay. you. <laughs> Again, I'm not diving into a circuit analysis, and even talking to Steve back and forth about these, he doesn't remember a ton of the designs because they're basically like just designers that kind of did stuff on contract and he's not even sure. But they did come from these origins and I do think it's worth investigating the thought that this distortion comes from a line right after the 97, it's called the Paisleys. A lot of you have never seen these. These are mainly sold in England, I believe. And this liquid metal is pretty similar. The word liquid metal is very deceiving because it's not liquid or metal, but the Wasabi Distortion is a similar layout. You have the boost, you have the distortion. You saw that in the last jam, I hit the boost and it changes the sound and makes it louder and overdrove the amp a little. I'll hit it on this and play a slide solo for you. This has level, you have that click through, tone select, then you have treble bass, and you have the clean blend and distortion. I'm gonna keep the pickup simulator um, on single coil and just play it. I'm, here's my goal. My goal with this is to show you that it looks aggressive and scary, because this kind of looks aggressive and scary, but you can use it like a nice, grungy, earthy, ampish, naturalistic, warm, not scary thing. Oh, there's a secret setting in this pedal I forgot about. You open the battery compartment. I'm gonna leave it on the whole time. There's a tiny white button in here. Are we zoomed in? You just hit that button and it has slap echo in it. So I'll leave that on the whole time. Sean Mullins introduced the next pedal. Rockabye. It is the Rockabye Wasabi. So this is an overdrive. I just stink and love all of the Dan Electro Echoes. All of them. So see this guy? It's huge. And it has this big giant slider. But essentially, inside of this pedal, had the box by the way. He has the box. Inside of this pedal, you have that delay on a slider. It has its own foot switch and you have the controls. And then you have a two knob overdrive, which is gonna 
most likely be from the food series. One of those two knob, like the pastrami. I think it's the pastrami, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's what you have here. You have a tape delay and you have an overdrive. And it also has the really cool feature that you can go echo out only. So you could do two amps and have this like really interesting spread. Um, high cut on and off, I'm gonna have that on. That's a feature that's only on this pedal. But yeah, I think it's this time to, to rock a bye. Rock a bye. What's the lyric? What's some juicy lyrics to that, Nick? Yeah, let's, uh, can you guys just start the jam and I'll just, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. She still lives with her mom outside the city, down that street about a half mile, and all her friends tell her she's so pretty, but she'd be a whole lot prettier if she smiled once in a while. Rockabye, rockabye, rockabye. <laughs> into the next pedal. It is the chorus trim, and uh, I'm gonna play the baritone. So, have the box. He has the box. I'm sparing you all the juicy details of the manuals again. I do wanna state, I don't know how you feel, but you're about to see something that could change your life. I mean, have these changed your life yet? They've sort of changed mine, because I get to be here with you. Aww. This is a really cool one. It has dual concentric pots. What that means is a couple of the pots have lower settings. You see this on like the metal zone and stuff like that. Chorus, tremolo. Now, the chorus uh, easily gets into soft vibrato. It's, it does a really nice modulation. You have full, wet, or dry. Stereo out with the dry. You have the pickup selector. Um, I'm just gonna play the baritone and harness Robert Smith Wish era, but like, he got into Limp Biscuit through time travel. Wasabi line. It's one that I had on a board for years and would put back on a board without hesitation because it is awesome and it's still really unique. If it weren't for companies like Old Blood Noise making a similar, like having some vibes of this kind of effect, there really is still nothing like it. Um, it is the forward reverse delay and yes, I have the box. He has the box. So the forward reverse delay is interesting because, again, I love Dan Electro delays, all of them. I think they're fantastic. And this essentially, in a nutshell, honestly, simplistically, and truthfully saying, it's basically a Dan Echo, which is my favorite straight delay, and the back talk, which is my all-time favorite reverse delay. In one pedal, but hold your horses, tap tempo. You get what I'm saying here? This deserves to be hoisted upon the shelves of pedal history as a front runner in delaying delay with tempo. And it just sounds amazing. So really simple, on and off, tap in the delay time. And it has a 
freaky amount of delay time. Mix, speed, repeat, high cut. This button goes to reverse. I think there's some of you out there who can wield a soldering iron, like a warrior of time and space, and you should, uh, you can turn that into a foot switch. I'm not gonna get into it, but you know how. This is an amazing pedal. Let's jam on this. And um, I think what I wanna go for here is back to the normal guitar. I'm gonna use this Roebuck, which is a newer uh, Dan Electro line, which is a really rare, um, is it the Mod? Yeah, Moss Torsion. This is like a thousand dollar pedal now. So he cloned it. It's really nice. So I'm gonna use that on a lead line. And I just, I wanna harness a sound that is the sound of America, the sound of football, and the sound of our hearts as one. All right, team, uh, it's halftime, and uh, I'm proud of what you're not able to do out there tonight. It's not over. You know, yeah. I'm, at, I'm at the halftime of my life. That's where you're at. Yeah. And you mean you you got bad medical news and That's stuff. That's right. What did the doctor even say to you? He said both of your lungs are just straight up garbage. Man. You can't even smoke anymore. I lost my house. My kids won't talk to me. And I've, right. I've made bad choices. Just like how I made a choice this morning when my wife looked at me square in the eye and she yeah. said, it's either me or football and you know where I'm standing, I'm standing in front of you, and I swear to God, if we don't get a win. Got a win. I was the best player in Texas. I had community colleges coming after me. They's knocking on my grandma's door, but I blew my knee out, and I'm not gonna be able to do that. Same for Ricky. That's right, and if I hadn't gotten him in that car accident that blew his knee out, I probably would've going to the NFL as well. We're yeah. gonna go out there like a herd of buffalo. That's right. And we're gonna wrangle up All a right. win under the big Texas sky. All right, boys, let's bring it in. And as we always say, jump high, open road, open drive a four, drive a four. Jerry James, put your helmet back on. My marriage is on the line. We're in Paris, Texas. Act like it. And if you don't win, I'm gonna move to actual Paris. They don't even have like loaf bread. It's like those little croissant things. I love this line of pedals. I hope you've enjoyed it. In the comments, let me know your favorite of these, if you have any experience with them, and do you remember them? So I'll, I'll also say this, it's really hard to find accurate info. I definitely tracked it down to what I believe is, well, it's a March 2004 advert, but Wayback Machine, which is really difficult sometimes and can be inaccurate the way it comes off, I, I believe that we have a January NAM 2004 release, but it'd be cool to know how you saw them and where you bought them. My personal experience was eBay. I was making a living at the time selling and flipping gear on eBay, and I remember buying them, and I'd never saw them in a store. So it'd be cool to kind of learn from you and remember what that was actually like, because it was 20 years ago almost. Again, a complete set that I've had for a while. All of them are boxed except the overdrive. And here are the details on how you can win that. So what you're gonna do is write your own Friday Night Lights team catchphrase. Something like this. Jump high, open road, open drive roads, a four. Drive. And then you're gonna fill out the Google form in the description and we will pick our favorite. Be funny and don't disappoint. Today's record time is brought to you by Radiohead's 2016 album, A Moon-Shaped Pool. Um, there is a chasm with Radiohead. It's like love or hate feels like I'm still trying to get Addison into it. But I do want to say I actually did not like this record when it came out. Uh, I just didn't connect with it. I am a fan and finder of Radiohead through Kid A first. I'm a very weird person. And then I went back, OK Computer, The Bins, Pablo Honey's like whatever. And then I kind of, you know, going forward in rainbows, all that stuff. And when, when this came out, I was a big fan for years at that point, understood the catalog, and it just, I didn't really love it and I didn't listen to it. But last year, this album was my most played album on Apple Music, meaning when I'm using Apple Music, which is like flights and traveling, I played the song Dex Dark 
something like over a hundred times last year. I would just put it on repeat and like fall asleep on airplanes. Um, it's my favorite Radiohead song now. Uh, there's this part where they must sample hitting a spring reverb amp or tank and it does the splash and they sample it into like the rhythm section of the song and it's just brilliant. Daydreaming track two is maybe my second favorite Radiohead song now. I really have fallen in love with this record. So if you love Radiohead, you might love this, but maybe you don't like Radiohead. Maybe this is something to listen to, but check out Dex Dark at least. And in the comments, let me know what you think. Let me know when you first heard this and maybe for fun, have you, what's your memory of discovering Radiohead for the first time and how much did you love it or how much did you hate it? Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I also really want to thank you for tolerating with me and my almost loss of voice from recent bronchitis and coughing for like six straight days. Anyway, I feel pretty good. I'm getting over it, but there were a couple times where I got choked up and it really wasn't about the pedals. So thank you for tolerating that. Hit like if you liked the episode, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon for future notifications of episodes. You can jam with us over at Band Lab. There's a link in the description. Also, don't forget to enter this whole thing to win these pedals. You saw the directions and the instructions. So we'll see you out there in the social media world trying to get a chance at that. That's all. Have a great day and don't eat an entire ball of wasabi. That would be my greatest gift of wisdom to you. Just don't ever do it. It really hurt. Bye.